Can the Wisconsin Badgers win a national championship this season? That's the question we're all asking. That's the question we've been trying to answer on this show for the last four weeks, five weeks, so, something like that. It would be a record eighth national championship. No program does it better. No program has more WCHA final face-off championships than the Wisconsin Badgers. And the Badgers just clinched another one this weekend. We're going to break it all down here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a Six Pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. You know what we're talking about. We're talking college hockey. It's it's the best time of the year. We got college hockey regional finals, followed by the Frozen Four. That same weekend, we get the first two rounds of the NCAA men's basketball tournament. It's March. It is madness. Here to break down the madness with us is from 1070 the game. It is Noah Clark, as always. Noah, how's it going? Hey, hey, happy, happy, uh, happy whatever day it is. But yeah, I I I'm thoroughly excited. March is we are getting into the thick of things in March. The road to the frozen four is beginning this week, and I cannot wait to talk Wisconsin. Badger women's hockey because they won the final face off again. And they not only won it, they kicked the crap out of Ohio state, which I <laughs> thoroughly loved every single minute of it. Uh, it, it was incredible before we get to the, the crap kicking. Uh, let's talk about the first game where Wisconsin needed some dramatics needed some heroics to get by the Minnesota Gophers. It, it was a game that, frankly, I thought Wisconsin was going to lose. Uh, I think everybody in that building thought Wisconsin was Guilty. going to lose. Yeah, it, it it didn't look good from the start. It didn't get worse as it went along, but as time went along, it looked like the 60 minutes were, were going to elapse. Uh, let's, let's start with the beginning of, of that game because the, the biggest questions were, Ava McNaughton let two pucks get by her on what I think the first three shots of the game, three on the last five. Of course, one of them was a dis disallowed goal. Another one of those was reviewed, but ultimately upheld after looking for goaltender interference. But Minnesota got two by the Golden Gophers early. Uh, fortunately, Wisconsin got another one by uh, Skylar, Skylar Veteran net for the Gophers as, as well. But Ava McNaughton, we, we debated hotly on this show. Who should be the starting goaltender? What did you think about her performance in the opening stages of that game against Minnesota? You know, she did, you know, pretty rough to start that game. But after a while, you started to see her settle down a bit. And it was it took it took about <laughs> it took about, you know, a period for her to get kind of settled down and get things going. But she really settled in. She did a phenomenal job. Now, there was a lot of things that she didn't do well in this game. I also play in part as well to the defense because Wisconsin's defense mm. was not that good, particularly in this game. And Ava just did a phenomenal job of responding when they needed her to respond. And it was an incredible game to the finish. Uh I just still can't believe Casey O'Brien put that that shot in. It gave me it gave me Daryl Watts vibes mm -hmm. from the national championship game. I just it I was just going crazy over how this team was able to pull it off. It it has to be hard for for a freshman goaltender to to settle in after your team scores a goal on their first shot of the game 38 seconds in. Wisconsin had an immediate lead in this game after of course Kirsten Sims comes out and scores on a beautiful tic-tac-toe pass from Casey O'Brien, a, a textbook zone entry. And then Wisconsin allows 12 shots on goal in, in that first period. The defense was suspect a after allowing the, those 12 shots on goal. Uh, Wisconsin only allowed seven in, in the next two periods. So combined. So they, they got a little bit lucky, but yeah, down the stretch of that game, a back and forth affair until Minnesota scored what it appeared would be the game-winning goal late at 344 left in regulation. The Gophers score. Badgers pull the goalie. Casey O'Brien banks it off of the back shoulder of Skylar Vetter and slips one pass to send it to overtime with 8.8 .8 seconds remaining. 
as you mentioned. I don't think it was intentional. I don't think it was a Daryl Watts oh, gosh, goal no. where where she won the national championship in 2021 by intentionally throwing up it off of the back of the Northeastern goaltender. But uh, you, you take them any way you can get them in, in a game like that as it comes down the stretch in, in, in playoff hockey. Sometimes you're just going to need the bounce to go your way. Oh my gosh. And, and it, that was the luckiest of bounces that Casey O'Brien could have had. I mean, it bounced off the back of Skylar Vetter's like helmet and into the net. Like that was that, that is a one in a million shot that you mm-hmm. could have attempted right there. And to save the Badgers season, you know, at least to save them from not getting sent home early on a Friday night, which would have been very sad, but they were able to close it out against the Gophers and, and, I, you got to give credit to like those, the, those three skaters, Lacey Eden, Casey O'Brien and Kirsten Sims. They were able to keep this team, you know, afloat at some points during the game. I mean, Kirsten mm-hmm. Sims, this entire like past weekend, she was on fire. Britta Curl was on fire as well. But the three that I just talked about really made an impact when it mattered and they were able to get the job done. Yeah, when it when it mattered, uh, Ava McNaughton tightened up in, in overtime, stopped mm-hmm. some big shots early after being kind of iced out in, in that second and third period with very, very, very few shots allowed by Wisconsin's defense until it all ends with a highlight real, real goal that made Sports Center top ten as Lacey Eden had been peppering the net all, all night and takes a no look backhand shot, j- just buries it to rip the hearts out of, of Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> a a uh, shocking development as, as Noah does, does uh, Patrick Kane's Patrick famed Kane heartbreaker, Selly. Um, it was incredible, uh, but the Badgers had to turn around very quickly from that one. And before we leave, I found it very insightful that, in Mark Johnson's press conference today, leading up to the NCAA tournament games, Johnson was asked about the decision to start Ava McNaughton in net. Two very close uh, statistical outputs by his freshman goaltender and his redshirt goaltender, Jane Gervais. And the decision to start her was one that they said they had been talking about for weeks. Uh, Maybe they were just listening to us talk about it for weeks. Uh, who who knows? Um, but um, hello, Olympic champion Mark Johnson, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> uh, but he, he also said, you know, when when you are sitting there and she struggles that early, you're sitting there and thinking, did did we make the wrong decision? Uh, what do you make of Mark Johnson's decision in the Ohio State game the next day to go with Ava McNaughton? one more time after she did struggle a little bit in the opening game of the weekend. I honestly thought for the start of it after that game, I was like me and you were sitting, me and you were texting about how like tough of a decision it was. If Mm -hmm. Ava was even going to start because she did not play the best against Minnesota. But when he went back to Ava for that game on Saturday, I was like, he's got some guts. He's got some, got major cojones to, to be able to go back to your freshman goaltender and, and go in against one of the top teams in the country. And she had a much better day too. I think a lot, a lot was a better on the offensive side. A lot was better on the defensive side. She played a lot better. She didn't really get, you know, too rattled in that game. And the Badgers, when that offense is rolling, I mean, like the goalie, I, 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 don't think really matters at that point because you're up by hurt by so much. So uh it was it was a very gutsy call by Mark Johnson. I thought there was a little part of me that was thinking maybe they go Jane Gervais, but I felt like confidence wise, if you're trying to build confidence for your freshman goalie, you would want to keep her in there for a very big moment against the Buckeyes. And he went with his gut and Played her for that championship, and and they won the championship out of that. Uh, they did. They certainly did win the championship and won it going away. Uh, Wisconsin, like you said, kicks the crap out of the Ohio State Buckeyes in the final faceoff championship game. Six to three, Wisconsin at one point in time led six 
One, it was the first time since the year 2020 Ohio State has trailed by five goals. Uh, an amazing performance. And the hallmark of it was the two Patty Kazmaier finalists being put back on a line together. Casey O'Brien and Kirsten Sims end up in the lineup on that line. Didn't technically get the start for, for the Badgers, but that line buzzing all day. Casey O'Brien, Kirsten Sims, Layla Edwards. What would you make of Mark Johnson's decision to switch the lineup and put his two hottest scorers on the same line uh, for this game that looked like it was going to be a knockdown drag them out fight between the top two teams in the country. He, he just knows how to work his magic. I mean, th this is what <laughs> we've, we've seen with Mark Johnson this whole season, like especially down the stretch with the two series against Minnesota and Ohio state, he switches, he switched the lineup a couple times. Now the first line and the second line, he's put different skaters in different spots, trying to get the comfortability in there. Now, He's got a full lineup. Everybody's healthy. This was like the first time I think this team was healthy since mm. I, like Lindenwood, I believe, at the very <laughs> beginning of the season. So to have that at your disposal, to have like all your skaters healthy at your disposal, I mean, he he really could go back into his bag and start, you know, dialing up some line changes. And that line, you know, that line with Sims and O'Brien were just so lethal. I mean, when when those two were on the ice at the same time, it was very hard for Ohio State. I mean, they were giving them fits all day on the offensive end, and it was not easy for the Buckeyes to try and keep up with that. And I know Ohio State has some good speed, but Wisconsin has more of the skill. And they have mm – -hmm. and, and when you have two players that are up for the Patty Cas, I mean, like – it's very hard. It's very hard to stop the stop that tandem. And another another phenomenal job by Mark Johnson. I I love what he's done this down the stretch of the season, switching lines up to tailor to what the team needs to go into these games. Like the first game against Ohio, like the the series against Ohio State at, at Lebon, he went with all underclassmen, and mm -hmm. it worked perfectly. It it like it, it worked really well to their to their skills. And in this one, he goes more experience. He goes more, he goes more defense with a little mix of the offense, and it works well. They score six goals in that game. I like how Mark Johnson was able to, uh, you know, come into this game and just work his magic with the lineup. Nothing but a master class from that man right there. He is the winningest coach in the sport in history, and he he's showing it right now for the the doubts that crept in about this team and its inability to beat Ohio state um, after it lost the two games early in the year at Columbus, despite, you know, even, even with the injuries and then you lose the first game back at Lebon e ever since then, he hasn't done anything wrong. He switched up the lines and absolutely blitzed the Buckeyes for it. He had a really hard starting goaltender decision to make. And so far, it looks like he made the right one, except for a five-minute stretch there. Uh, it looks like, by all accounts, he, he has made the right decision. And let's not discount uh, Le Layla Edwards on that line, a fellow sophomore who had two goals of her own. It just felt like any time anything was happening on the ice, it was that line out there doing it. it. It felt like that line was playing 60 straight minutes. Basically you, you take that along with Britta curl and, and you have everything Wisconsin did uh, in that game, just an absolute masterclass. Also uh, punishing the Buckeyes on the power play, a huge boon for, for that Wisconsin team to take advantage of an Ohio state special teams unit that has been decent all year, but as Ohio state's power play looked, Look, I told you all it was fraudulent like a month ago. Um, preach, <laughs> preach, <laughs> preach. Um, for for Wisconsin to do that and, and set themselves up going forward for big success was was very exciting to watch. And no reason that team shouldn't feel like they can beat anybody right now. Let, let's continue talking about K Casey O'Brien, the top three finalists for the Patty Kazmaier Memorial. Award were announced today as we're recording this on Wednesday, March 13th. 
two Badgers in, in the final three for the top player in women's college hockey this season. Two Badgers for the first time in program history are top three finalists for the award. Of course, that is Casey O'Brien and it is Kirsten Sims. Noah, I know you have thoughts. I, I, I will I will give the floor to you. Oh, let me just point out by saying if the committee does not put Kirsten, if does not give Kirsten Sims this award, I may lose my mind. I, I may lose my mind. Like she has had a <laughs> phenomenal sophomore season this year. And going off of last year, she made the NCAA all tournament team last year mm -hmm. and was on the all rookie team last year as well. This year, she goes back and she scores 71 points this year, 32 goals, 39 assists, which equals up to 71 points in 36 games. Mind you, Casey O'Brien has played two games more. Not saying that Casey O'Brien hasn't had, a, hasn't had mm. you know, a bad season, but like 70 points in 36 games, that is pretty impressive. And the way that she's scoring these goals, too, is even more impressive. And I think if if you're the committee out there, if you're the voters, do the right thing. She, there's two badgers, there's two badgers in this final. I, if you give it to Kirsten Sims, if you don't give it to Kirsten Sims, at least give it to Casey O'Brien, but like people. She is like she has had an incredible season. Like she was the eighth player in Badger women's hockey history to have a 70-point season. Daryl Watts was eight, was the, was the last player to do it in 2019 and 2020. And she got robbed of a Patty Kazmer award. She did. I think Kirsten Sims should win this award because dead gummit, they need to finish. They need to do what, you know, Daryl Watts couldn't, which is give somebody a 70 point score that award. And it's been too long since we've seen a Badger host that award or hoist, excuse me, hoist that award. Back in is Madison, it, like, is it Davian? Was Davian the last one to win it? I yeah, I back think in she was seventeen. Yeah, it's, I don't think I don't think anybody's won it since since twenty seventeen. And and Daryl Watts was nominated for it in twenty twenty one. She didn't yeah. win it. And I just I I was scratching my head when they made that call that she didn't win it. I thought she was for sure for sure going to win it at one of those two seasons. I think. This is an open and shut case. I, I yes. don't think you. I don't think you need to worry. Um, th there are some years where this is a more interesting discussion about who in the top three is going to end up winning the award, because sometimes it's like a couple of high scoring forwards and a really really solid de defender. Sometimes it's you know a, a defender, a high scoring forward, and a really impressive goaltender. This time around, you have the number one scoring scorer in the country in Kirsten Sims by points per game, the number two scorer in the country in Casey O'Brien by points per game. And then the number three scorer in the country in Cornell's Izzy Daniel in by points per game. It's clear that this is a year where this is a like most outstanding scoring performance award. And when that is the case, it's just hard for me to see a realistic scenario in which the votes are tallied up and that it doesn't go to the top scorer in the country. Kirsten Sims, <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> Kirsten Sims is averaging 1.97 points per game. <laughs> that ridiculous. is a video game number. Ridiculous. <laughs> um uh, absurd. I mean, I mean, one of the if she if they win the title, this will go down as one of the greatest seasons by an individual badger in program history. Like Especially, imagine she wins the mop. Like, that's great. Like, go to Laban. Look at the huge wall of Olympians. Saying it is the potential greatest individual performance in program history is, is saying something. I do not take that lightly. Um, any final thoughts on the Patty Kazmaier award? People, I say this again. If you if you do not vote for Kirsten Sims, I will be very unhappy with your decision, and I will be consulting every single one of you for why you made this decision and how stupid you could be for that. And let the, let the record show, too. If Casey O'Brien gets it, I will be happy. She's also very close to getting 70 points as well, 
which is yes. even which is even insane. And there has to be there has to be a record like some type of record in most 70 point scorers on an individual team in a season. Yeah. And they yeah. have most 60 point scorers on a team in a single yeah. season as well, too, which I think it's it's bonkers. But Kirsten Sim season is without a doubt bonkers to the max. <laughs> yeah. Um, Casey O'Brien is sitting at a very nice 69 points this season. Nice. Um and yes, I, I am looking at the release from the athletic department now. And Anne Renee Debian was the last to win the award in in 2017. This is this is the longest drought in, in, in school history. So let's win it um, for, for those interested in finding out who will win the, the Patty Kazmaier Award for the top player in women's college hockey. That award will be announced um, in New Hampshire uh, the day between the Frozen Four semifinal and national championship game on Saturday, March 23rd. Uh, the announcement, you can watch that live on NHL Network at 11.30 a.m. Central next Saturday. Uh, before that happens and before hopefully Wisconsin uh, forwards, Kirsten Sims and Casey O'Brien are surrounded by the rest of their team uh, to have one of them accept that award. They got to get there. They got to get there by winning this weekend. And Noah, do do I have something glorious for everyone Ooh. on this this beautiful beautiful website um, podcast to see? It is <gasps> the bracket. Ooh. We have a bracket, and if you watched the show last week, we told you what the bracket was going to be. It's this. It's the same thing. Um, <laughs> um, it's not that hard, right? The, the, it, this isn't like the NCAA tournament men's basketball selection committee. This isn't like the college football playoff where the games don't matter. Um, it, it is by and large a math problem by which teams go where in the bracket. There is limited flexibility in where you can move teams in their seed groups. Um, but overall, it's very easy to figure out what, which, what, what exactly is the bracket is going to be. Plus it's only 11 teams, right? Can't be that hard. Um, so Wisconsin is going to host the regional final this Saturday at 2 PM in Laban arena. Uh, you'll be able to watch that on big 10 plus of course. Uh, and then the, the regional or sorry, then the frozen four semis and the national championship game will be on the ESPN family of networks. I believe the national championship game is airing on ESPN. U. um, Wisconsin's going to play the winner of St. Lawrence and Penn state two pretty decent teams. Uh, let, let's talk about St. Lawrence first. This, this is the higher ranked team of the two that Wisconsin has a chance to end up playing in the net or in the regional final game. Uh, Noah, any, any pressing thoughts about the St. Lawrence saints who come out of the ECAC, the, the top East coast hockey conference. Well, I, I talked a little bit about this last week. St. Lawrence has kind of been on a bit of an up and down stretch towards the end of the season. They've played, they haven't played as well as many teams, you know, would think. I mean, they've, you know, they've played a lot of teams in their conference and they've made a lot of those games very close. Now they've won all the, they've won the games that they should win, but they should be winning by a lot more than what they should, you know, and it does concern me a little bit what St. Lawrence has there because you look at their first line, the first line's incredible, but then after that, their, their mm -hmm. depth on that team is very questionable. And so it, it, it is something to look at from St. Lawrence. Now, what the bright spot is for this team, they could score. They, they can score. They are eighth in total offense this year. They, you know, they average, you know, three goals a game and they're a team offensively that could give Wisconsin some fits. Wisconsin's defense, not really that, not really that, you know, good this year, very young. And I think St. Lawrence could take a lot of advantage of that and really capitalize on those offensive opportunities. This could get, this could get very high scoring if Wisconsin mm -hmm. lets it against St. Lawrence. So watch out for the Saints. If that, if this that is the, were their matchup, this is the team that I am most afraid of coming out of, uh, the, the regional first round that game being played, um, as you are listening to this tonight on, on Thursday at Laban arena, um, you should be able to watch that in a big 10 plus as well aired for Penn state. 
Um, th this is a high level offense for St. Lawrence. They, their leading scorer, a Abby Hustler, Na nature by which she scores big time goals when the team really needs it. Um, I, I think between her and Julia Gosling, uh, that, that team is awesome. Uh, Abby Mer or sorry, Abby Hustler has 55 points on the season coming into the ECAC tournament semifinals. She was riding a 15 game point streak. Uh, that was snapped in that loss to Clarkson in the tournament semifinals. But no, Abby, Abby Hustler for, for as great as we were just talking about a 1.97, like points per game stretch, right? Abby Hustler is playing just as well as Kirsten Sims is basically right now. She has 30 points in the last 16 in her last 16 games. Uh, she is incredible, incredible uh, top 10 uh, finalists for, for the Patty Kazmaier award eighth in the country in points per game, sixth in goals, eighth in assists. Julie, Julie Gosling uh, is a great like addition to her in a second 50 point score on the season. And she is clutch. She has seven game winning goals, nine power play goals. And I think another thing that makes these teams kind of similar and match up really well against one another is uh, goal goaltending and special teams. St. Lawrence's goaltender, Emma Sophie Nordstrom, has a 930 save percentage. Ava McNaughton on the season, 929. In team stats, the, the teams are ranked third and fourth in power play, respectively, between Wisconsin and St. Lawrence by a razor thin margin. Razor thin margin between which team has the better penalty kill as well. It's it's a tough it's a tough out. The, these ECAC teams are better and better every season. I if St. Lawrence comes out of the gate on Saturday and kind of punches Wisconsin in the mouth, they might build a lot of momentum fast, quiet down that crowd at LeBon, and it could become scary really quickly. Yeah, and it's the 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 strengths of that, like we said before, like if you play into their team strength, it's going to be hard. And the strength of St. Lawrence is that offense. They are very quick mm -hmm. and they can get in a, in, a, in a scoring groove. And even just looking, you know, talking about Abby Hustler, she is kind of a hustler when it comes to scoring goals. She knows how oh. to find her way to get, <laughs> but she knows how to find a way to get the, the puck in the back of the net. She's tied seventh uh, in the country in points this year with 55 points. It's really impressive the way she's been able to play and, and watching some, I watched, you'd be surprised by this. I did watch a St. Lawrence game one time just to see what St. Lawrence looked like. And she plays really well, the way that she moves into the zone, being able to set up other, uh, other teammates with the puck, getting them in rhythm is something that I think Wisconsin, they have, over the past few weeks, been able to counteract that, but they haven't been able to counteract that as well. So, and even too with Minnesota, they struggled against Abby Murphy at some points in the game, mm -hmm. but they were able to contain her. This is kind of another one of the situations where they have got to contain her and cannot let her get on a roll and start firing shots on Ava McNaughton. Because if they do, it's going to be very hard for Wisconsin. And like you said, if they score that first goal, really changes the complete complexion of this game and, and the Badgers in terms of winning this game and getting themselves in a good spot. St. Lawrence and Penn State meet, meet in this game. The last time these two teams met, uh, it was last season in one matchup that Penn State won 4-2. to two. It was the first time the Nittany Lions ever got a win over the St. Lawrence State Saints. And now Penn State finds itself back playing St. Lawrence, back in the first round of the NCAA tournament for the second straight season, uh, they have won the College Hockey America Conference Tournament. Last year, Penn State got to the tournament and lost in triple overtime in the first round to Quinnipiac, seeking a win, a berth to the regional final. Uh, what are your impressions of this Penn State team as, you know, a, a kind of co conference conference half sibling uh, of Wisconsin's <laughs> but this Penn State Nittany Lions team is very interesting they offensively right there with St. Lawrence I mean it's it's very close to where they are scoring wise you know they score three they score three you know 0.27 goals per game St. Lawrence has six more goals than that six or seven more goals than that um on offense ninth in total offense the big thing for Penn State and I think St. Lawrence has a big, you know, has a 
not a, not a big advantage over Penn state's defense, Penn state, a very good defensive team, at least in, mm. in that conference, they're 14th yeah. in total defense th- this year. So there's a lot to, to love about Penn state in terms of their defensive play and, you know, their offensive play. Uh, what does kill Penn state, however, their special teams, not, really the the best not not really the best they are 31st in penalty kill and in power play this year they are they are eighth st lawrence is fourth in the country respectively in power play and 12th in penalty kill this penn state team i think needs to stay out of the box they don't want to get into a situation where st lawrence's special teams is out there and just killing them constantly so keeping your player, keeping their skaters out of the box, I think is going to be very key. And the same thing I said about, you know, off air with Minnesota, with Minnesota Duluth is in Ohio state. If those two teams meet, if you score that one goal and just pl- let your defense play, dictate the rest of that game, I think that they should be set, but it's, it's going to be interesting that, that that's the big key for them is special teams. They do not want to let St. Lawrence get that advantage to where they could start, you know, rattling off consistent goals one after another, after another, and it just turns into a complete blowout. I can absolutely see that happening. Uh, so I went back and watched the CHA conference tournament final between Penn state and mercy Hearst today, because I'm a weirdo. Um, and, <laughs> Oh, we're not so sicko yet. Don't worry. I have that. I have that dialed up. Um, <laughs> and, one of the things that I noticed in that one was that Penn state, I think has improved its team speed on the season, but it's still not close to what Wisconsin's is. And I remember this because I said, I was watching that CHA uh, conference tournament final. And then I said, Oh wait, I can go full sicko. Penn state has never won a game at Laban arena. Penn state has won a game over Wisconsin because they did so in the season opener last year. And I went and I watched that game today from almost two full years ago at this point, because I wanted to see how some of these players on Penn state stacked up with Wisconsin. Um, Casey O'Brien, I think is going to be the fastest skater on the ice uh, on Saturday. If Penn state is the opponent, but I think Penn state has improved its team speed to make that special teams um, gap that might otherwise be present between these two programs a little bit smaller. Uh, They added a pair of transfers in Brianna Brooks from New Hampshire uh, out of of the new ha, who I think has been really impressive for them this season. She has 32 points has uh, translated into the conference transferring up to the CHA, I think really impressively. And then a transfer down from the ECAC from Colgate, uh, Maggie McCarran, Maggie McEachran, sorry, um, she has 19 points on the, dece- on the season and adding that talent that was originally recruited to Colgate, I think has done a lot for this, uh, Penn state defense, the team stats for defense, I think are a little mistelling misleading when you just look at them for Penn state, because they are top 10 in goals against average, but the save percentage for their starting goaltender, sophomore, Katie Disa doesn't add up there. I think that, and and like I said, Penn state added a really high level transfer from Colgate on its defense. I think that one of the things Penn state does, um, to improve its goals against metrics and kind of help its goaltender that I think is a little bit more shaky is play really, really solid team defense. Penn state, they back check really hard. It, it is impressive in, in a way that makes me a little bit jealous sometimes because this Wisconsin offense that just loves to score is sometimes a little bit lazy getting back on defense. Um, and I think the way they disrupt plays in the neutral zone, that's how they could end up beating Wisconsin in this one. Um, I think that's Penn state. I think St. Lawrence en- ends up winning that one. I think Penn state just has, too many other questions. St. Lawrence has just seen and competed with much more high level competition this year. Um, well, Penn state out in the CHA is just not quite the tier of program that St. Lawrence is on. Uh, what, what say, you know, who, who's Wisconsin's first round or regional final opponent on Saturday. Honestly, I think it's going to be St. Lawrence. I think Penn state 
they're if they again if they get into a situation where they have to where they have to go down a, a skater, I think St. Lawrence is going to take advantage of that, and their momentum is just going to skyrocket. And I think it'll be a good matchup for Wisconsin, a very early test for them to play against St. Lawrence. I I, I do think Wisconsin could could handle St. Lawrence in this game as well. I think it could potentially be a blowout. Um, but yeah, I got St. Lawrence winning against Penn state and they'll play Wisconsin in this uh, regional final. I think that's right. Um, which brings us to the question of the day. Can Wisconsin win a back-to-back national title? Noah, this program has several national championships. When is the last time Wisconsin went back to back? Oh man, it was, it was, I want to say it was what I see the banners every time I go to the bond and it always drives me insane, but it was like in the early 2010s, right? Mm, like you have to go further back. Actually, no early 2000s, early 2000s. Yeah, so like they have not gone back to back since the first two national championships, the most national championships in the country with seven, but have not gone back to back since 2006, 2007. I do think there is a chance for this Badger team to go back to back. I think the way that their offense is just surging right now, it is very hard to knock them off their rhythm. I also think too, it wouldn't surprise me if they meet Ohio state in the, in the national championship game again, and we are treated to yet another great game between those two teams. But I think Wisconsin, the way that their offense has been playing, the way that their scores, you know, have been playing and Mark Johnson, Finding his goaltender for the stretch of this for the stretch run, I think is very huge for the Badgers. And I think we may be seeing an eighth banner being hung up in a uh, Laban Ice Arena here uh, with another national championship for the Badgers. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Uh I, I could have some confidence. You gotta have confidence for this. I think the top four teams are better than they ever have been. Yeah. Um like Colgate couldn't beat Clarkson all year and then got him in the ECAC tournament final off of like that game was zero, zero going so deep. And then Colgate won by firing a shot. They ricocheted off a Clarkson defender into the back of the net. Um, it was three zero, but the other two goals were empty netters. Uh, like that happens. Clarkson then hosts Minnesota. I, I mean, like what, what a treat for this Brad Frost team that graduated 10 players last year fights tooth and nail this year, gets a, a high seed in the NCAA tournament just to have to go to Potsdam, New York. Like, first of all, you have to go to Potsdam. Like that's impossible to get to Uh second of all, you have to go play Clarkson. Don't you just feel awful for the Gophers, Noah? Oh, Totally. I'm, I'm crying. Here's my little tiny <laughs> violin for them. I, I feel so bad that Minnesota has to go just get the doors blown off and buy a pissed off Clarkson team. <laughs> um, you're frozen four. Do you think it's going to be the top four seeds? Oh, I want to throw Minnesota Duluth in there just so bad just because. You're so weird on this take. I feel like the Bulldogs could upset the Buckeyes. I know that we've talked about this. Like, yes, Minnesota lose confidence may have been killed because they've lost to them five times this year. But like, it's this, you said it with like Clarkson and Colgate, like Mm. Colgate, like Colgate had not beat Clarkson all year. And then the one time that they did, they finally got them in the, in the championship game in their conference championship game. I think Minnesota is the same way. They had not beaten Ohio State all year. And I say this, if they get one goal, just one goal, let the defense do the rest. You have outstanding goaltender play. I think Minnesota Duluth could upset Ohio State. I think it's after that, I think Colgate and Clarkson are going to be there. I think Wisconsin's going to be there as well. But Ohio State, I think, is in a very tough pickle because of the defensive play that Minnesota Duluth has and mm. Minnesota Duluth, you know, all, all, you know, records are out the window at this point. It's single elimination. Anything could happen. I think that the, uh, kind of the counterfactual of Wisconsin getting momentum by beating Ohio state in the, uh, regular season finale is Minnesota Duluth. 
Wisconsin got that win over, uh, over, over Ohio state and it propelled them to have enough confidence to go out and absolutely beat their brains in, in the WCHA final face off. <laughs> then Duluth has now lost five consecutive times to Ohio state. You have that in the back of your head when you go out and have to play them a potential sixth time in the NCAA tournament. I think that's hard. I think that sticks in the back of players' heads as much as they don't want to say that it does. It's, I mean, I feel like at that point too, it's like, you know what? Enough is enough. And let's just go, mm. let's just go beat them. <laughs> I mean, like, I feel like Minnesota lose confidence. Yes, there, there may be some confidence where it's shot, but the other side of it too, is their confidence could be like, Hey, we played this team five times this year at some point, you know, you know, They'll win five out of those six times. We'll get that one win against them. That means something. This could be their one win. If we played them 10 times, they might win nine. Yes. Um, <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> um, so I, I will take I will take chalk in to the Frozen Four. Uh, I guess Noah's picking Ohio State to lose early, which is crazy to me. Um, Always crazy. And then I will put... I think we're going to get, I think we're going to get part six in the national championship game. I I do. And I don't know what's going to happen um, because these two teams have played basically so evenly all year. I, I don't know, except for that last data point we have, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but Colgate, it would not surprise me for, for them to be in the national title game. I, my, my prediction when the bracket came out was kind of regardless I think Ohio State's going to be playing one of these two teams that it has played earlier in the season, either a rematch again, a rubber match uh, against Colgate as those two teams split to open the season or uh, a game against Wisconsin once again, where they could have a four two advantage on the season series or Wisconsin ties it all up at three to three and takes the tiebreaker home. Um, do you have thoughts on? Who who between Clark's or between Wisconsin Colgate comes out of that semifinal or out of your hypothetical Duluth Clarkson semifinal? Oh, honestly, I, I I think Wisconsin. You know, we could be seeing Wisconsin and Clarkson in the national championship game. I I, I think because last year Wisconsin beat Colgate to yeah. go to you know the next round, and mm -hmm. they know what it takes to beat that Colgate team. I I truly think that. I don't want to. I don't know if Colgate has a shot if they're to play Wisconsin again, just because of what happened last year. I also do think Colgate may have a chance, but again, the way Wisconsin is playing right now, I mean, it's just they are in such a groove that it's hard for me to see anybody beating them at all in the Frozen Four and even in the national championship game. The biggest thing for me is that. Just worry that Wisconsin's defense is not going to be able to hold up down the stretch. I am a little bit shook by the first five minutes of Ava McNaughton in the um, in the Minnesota game, and then you have the a PTSD, way... Kedrick. You have a yeah. PTSD that comes in your sleep now. You just see the first five minutes of that <laughs> semifinal for the final faceoff. If they can't stay locked in for 60 minutes, they they could lose, I think, in any of the three games that they would have to play to win the national title. Uh, Noah, any final thoughts? As we have once again gone impressively long, I think yes. we are also going to break the record once again. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to give a big shout out to Kedrick for hooking me up with BTN Plus last week. My, my brother, <laughs> my brother over here coming in clutch because I didn't get to watch the semifinal. Uh, for Ohio State, Minnesota, which I did get to watch. So thank you, Kendrick, for that. Big shout out. Um, and then uh, we're going to be treated to an incredible weekend of, of college hockey. I think this is going to be some fun stuff. And, and I'm telling you, I'm a big Bulldogs fan right now. Go, go Bulldogs. Let's, let's go, let's go beat some Buckeyes real quick. <laughs> yeah, that little kid on a co college game day cheering for, cheering for Yale is uh, go Bulldogs. Uh, <laughs> not so fast. Nah, I can't say that next word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that is our, our great friend of the show, Clark Rigo. Um, find him. Clark Rigo. I just said your Twitter handle. Your name you is. You use my Twitter handle. <laughs> 
It's been a long show today. It's been a very long show. <laughs> oh, go find him on stuff. Listen to the Snap the Pigskin podcast. Where are you listening to podcasts? Uh, listen to him on the student section on WSUM on Snake Sports Tuesdays and on 1070 the game during Badgers women's hockey intermissions, pregame, postgame. Uh, I got to go before he talks my ear off because I got to go see him again for this game on Saturday. Talk to you soon. <laughs> a pleasure. That, of course, Noah Clark, as we go impressively long once again on this show, he and I saying at the very beginning, we cannot go as long as we did last time, and we went longer. Oh, well. Sorry it was not concise. We try to make it as thoughtful as we can. We know we don't always live up to that, but we thank you for listening anyway and enjoying your morning with Six Pack, the Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week while you're here listening on your podcast platform of choice. Even a nice review, five stars, kind comments. Listen, if you've made it this far in the show, the least you can do, I guess making it this far is the least you could do. But like, if you've made it this far in the show, you obviously like it. Just go leave a review. Go go like the video on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. It's free. We'll talk to you again soon on Wisconsin. <laughs>